So I tried to tell y'all about Manscape a while ago, but you didn't listen. This stopped being about nuts a long time ago. Manscape is for your overall grooming experience, for your overall hygiene experience. Now we have the Beard Hedger Pro Kit. You can look all up in this little box right here that Manscape provided for me, and you'd be like, "Well, Vach, if this is supposed to be a top tier beard trimmer, where's where's all the guards, Vach? How do I adjust the length for my beard?" Let me tell you something, man. Manscape is pushing the envelope. They have an internal beard length adjustment trimmer this has 20 different notches on it for 20 different length and just look come on bro that's 20 different notches so whether you got a beard like me or a beard like law nation we got some for you easy to clean you pop this thing right off clean it up pop it right back on and it is waterproof anyway so it shouldn't be getting super duper dirty anyway inside of this kit man we have beard conditioner beard balm we have a beard shampoo and a beard oil one day my beard is gonna get thick enough to use some beard oil but you get a free gift that comes with this package you get a beard brush a beard comb and beard scissors so when you do have that big thick long beard you just want to make those small adjustments right manscape sends you some beard scissors on the house you can't beat this deal with a stick so listen man go get you one of these man use promo code vosh20 for 20 percent off and free shipping and they ship internationally listen man it's normally your balls will thank you but we got beard trimmers so now your beard will thank you your face will thank you we're gonna stick with beard your beard will thank you so we're back with another soliloquy. Marcus Hardison would call this sober vibe. Um, sober vibe is when I put down the fandom and I really get into my critical thinking bag and I compile thoughts and I present them to you in a way of a soliloquy, monologue, whatever, whatever I'm doing for that day. Right. Why is sober vibe needed today? Well, because I was thinking about the draft. I was actually watching cornerbacks when I thought about this. Right. I was thinking about the draft and I was thinking about the Cowboys where they drafting in the draft. Um, and it made me put this poll up It's on my community page Y'all go check that poll out If y'all ain't got nothing else to do After you watch this video And I started thinking The one thing I can't do Is be irresponsible And put too much of my fandom uh, Into my off-season evaluation That would be irresponsible of me What you mean by that, Vach? And why is it important? Well, for one What I mean is You know Let's just say I'm not, fan, I'm not a fan of Conor McGovern Playing left guard Every time I see Conor McGovern film playing left guard, it just kind of made me a little sick, right? Now, let's just say I took that feeling and I, you know, put all of my off-season evaluation energy into getting us a guard because I personally don't like Conor McGovern. And why is this important? It's important because I'm thinking this way. The Cowboys may not be thinking this way. And sometimes I have to check myself, right? Like, yeah, man, like, like, man, Vach, is, Vach says this. If we can upgrade left guard, we're going to be good to go. What if the Cowboys think something different? Like, what if they have a different plan for how to upgrade the Cowboys? So I made this poll to have five different um, positions, five different scenarios on it. And I was really trying to figure out what the biggest impediment was to the 2022 Dallas Cowboys that could be fixed through player acquisition, right? I just wanted to kind of talk through some of that uh, today with y'all. Y'all want to uh, run the obvious ones first, and then we're going to do the other ones that I just thought about in the back of my mind as I was doing whatever I was doing. But what y'all want to do? All right, cool. We'll talk about wide receivers, okay? So Noah Brown was your second best wide receiver, and that's different than wide receiver two. I think Noah Brown was still your wide receiver four, right? But he was still your second best wide receiver. Michael Gallup didn't give you very much at all last year in terms of a guy that's going to do anything for Dak Prescott. He just didn't do much for you. Um, and T.Y. Hilton, yeah, he, he gave you the third and 30 or whatever and a couple other little – you know, catches and first downs here or there, but T.Y. Hilton really didn't move the needle for you. Besides C.D. Lamb, uh, your number your number two receiver was definitely Noah Brown, and 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 it's just something something that just makes me sick about that. I just wanted to, I it just made me want to scratch myself when I think that that Noah Brown was your second best wide your your wide receiver four was your second best guy, right? This is what's going to make this weird or what's going to make this complicated or what's going to make the Cowboys like really, really think about this. They're going to think about the idea that, OK, well, Michael Gallup gets to be one year removed away from his ACL surgery. <sighs> if, if we potentially go get, you know, like one of these offseason free agent guys, it's not really a big name offseason free agent guy that's out there in the free agent pool. Mm. 
there's the idea that we drafted Jalen Tober to help us, but he couldn't. Dra- but he couldn't help us because he didn't have the mental or the nuance side of the game down, right? So now we're one year removed away from young, uh, you know, lined up at corner Jalen Tober, right? Right? And I don't even think Noah Brown's the guy that we're going to bring back via free agency. If they do, I'm gonna I'm gonna just have a fit. But the Cowboys could possibly be banking on that. Or you know the whole thing, Stephen John. Well, you know we got Sammy and uh, Sammy and you know, um, uh, the guy that we oh, what's old boy the uh, kick return a Turpin. We have a tur- and those guys are gonna have to step up. Those guys are gonna you know you know we're gonna need them. We're gonna need those guys to step up and really help us out there. That could be a thing, Stephen Jones. Right. If the Cowboys are, are thinking that way, do you really think that they're going to put top resources into wide receiver? Now, look, this ain't what Vach thinks. You ask Vach, hell yeah, right? Vach says, go get me a go get me another number one wide receiver to go along with my number one wide receiver to make life better for my quarterback and we can boogie. I don't want to move into draft or free agency. Um you know, relying on Jalen Tobert or relying on Michael Gallup. I want to act like we ain't got nothing but CeeDee Lamb and a bunch of wide receiver fives. We're going to have to make up some ground from there. That's how I'm moving forward. But let me entertain you with something, right? When Terrence Steele got hurt, this run game went to shit, right? And I know everybody's asking, you know, about the whole Zeke pay cut thing or the do we franchise tag Tony Pollard for $10 million for one year? Do we, you know, draft a running back super early, right? Like if the Texas kid or the Bama kid is there, do we take them at 26 or do we wait later on in the draft to go get a running back, right? I think no matter what, we can walk away saying that we can walk away saying two things, right? That when Terrence Steele was healthy, this run game was fine. When Terrence Steele got hurt, this run game was shit. When... Whether these guys were healthy or not, they were still 32nd in pass rush win rate and Dak Prescott didn't get sacked, right? So now we got to think about what's the biggest solution for this offensive line? Do we just do what Jerry says and put most strength into the strength and make a strength a bigger strength? I think that's the thing that could possibly happen. Um, Terrence Steele, hopefully he uh, comes back healthy, doesn't have any setbacks or anything like that. You know, offensive linemen, you know, they don't have to do some of the the things that wide receivers have to do. So that's going to be helpful there. But this whole idea of Conor McGovern, now y'all know Vach can't stand the idea of Conor McGovern playing guard for me. But I got to ask myself, if it's a first round pick on it, Right, if I had to stake a first round pick on this Vach, can you live with Connor McGovern if Dak gets a really good receiver? Or can you live with a less good receiver, whether it be you draft a dude in day two, whether it be Tobe, whether you know, whether it be Gallup, can you live with one of those guys? Right? But then you go and get you like a really good left side player to pair with Tyler Smith. And this is coming from a very sincere place because I'm always beat on the table to get O-line early. It's never a sexy pick, but it's, but it's, it's less sexy when you notice that your offensive line need help, right? This team has 32nd in pass, in pass rush win rate in which your quarterback really doesn't even get sacked anyway because because he gets rid of the football. And then there's this idea that, hey, we need a deep threat, but you can't have a deep threat if your offensive line is 32nd in pass rush win rate, right? The question is, do you live with what this offensive line has to give you with a guy like Connor McGovern, Fournyak at left guard, um, or do you go and get the wide receiver help, right? In my mind... Let's just say I can get Quentin Johnston, wide receiver from TCU, the 6'4 kid with the with the yak ability, the quick feet, and all that kind of stuff. If you can get me a great wide receiver too, I can live in this world with Connor McGovern. I can accept Connor McGovern. But the best part about this is, and this really makes me a little more confident in this offensive line, you know, situation where we really don't have to um, you know, lose our mind and jump and make a mistake with this offensive line evaluation. Is that in the draft offensive linemen, you can guards in particular, you can find good guards later in the draft. When I say later, I don't mean too late. I mean like, you know, second round, third round, or something like that. So if you promise me you can draft me a wide receiver in the first round and give me a good guard in the second, I'll feel good. Right? But let me just make this thing a little more complicated with the linebacker position. Vanderesh is a free agent. We don't know if he's coming back or not. Anthony Barr is a free agent. Him might be gone. I know Cowboy Nation loved Jabril Cox for some whatever reason. Something going on in that building where Jabril Cox just ain't playing. That's okay. Fine with me. 
Michael Parsons probably the best linebacker on the team, but he also the best damn pass rusher on the team. You can't count on him to be a linebacker full time. The only linebacker you really got is Damone Clark. That's it. Damone Clark and Devin Harper, those two dudes are your linebacker dudes. Those are the two guys that are manning the fort right now. So in real life, I know Cowboy Nation run around here talking about wide receiver two. We run around here talking about guard or left side player. Linebacker is really a bigger emergency than both those positions. And do you think the Cowboys are are thinking that way, right? This ain't necessarily the the, the draft where I'm taking a whole bunch of linebackers, you know. Um, Drew Sanders, the kid from Arkansas, is a guy that I would take. But besides that, man, how many linebackers come in day one and just take Brillo's job, Jabril Cox's job? Uh uh-huh. That's an interesting conversation. This may be a situation where the only good linebacker that, that you may feel real, real good about as a linebacker is in, you know, round one. And if that's not going to be the case, you need to haul ass and go call Leighton Van Der Esch to see if he'll, if, if he'll come back for you. Call one of these other linebackers. Call Bobby Wagner. And see if they'll come play some linebacker for you. But I think the 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 more you go down this list the bigger this emergency kind of gets for these other positions right which leads me to believe if the cowboys had had an opportunity um to pick the top linebacker on the board versus their top receiver on the board which one would they pick what's the bigger emergency you can find a good wide receiver in in this draft in particular i think you'll have a better chance finding a wide receiver you like in day two and a guard that you like in day two or a tackle because Tyler Smith can, can play guard too. You you have a better chance to find those dudes in day two than linebacker uh, in, in day two. Linebacker, good linebacker in this draft is scarce. A scarce resource. And it may be the um, bigger emergency. Now, and you, you really won't be looking for a linebacker in free agency because all those dudes that are worth a damn are going to be expensive. So Van Der Esch may be backing you into a corner where you have to pay him a little bit. And when Van Der Esch backs you in the corner where you have to pay him a little bit, you may be a little bit, you know, <laughs> it may be a little bit nerve wracking at the linebacker situation, right? I got two more. This last one, in my opinion, is the biggest emergency, but then we'll cross that road whenever we get there. The last, well, the, the fourth one I wanted to bring to you is pass rush down the stretch, right? When, you know, when this team first first kind of, you know, got into their little bag or whatever, you know, and, you know the, 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 pass rush, the pass rush was incredible incredible you know and teams started finding ways to deal with the pass rush and they started finding ways to get rid of the ball quickly and even when they wasn't get, getting rid of the ball quickly we just there was just this time where we just couldn't get to the quarterback and that's because i think that you really need better dudes down the line so we know michael parsons is a stud 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 we know he gets sacks right but the other dudes that we have is very interesting D Law as a pass rusher, Dorrance Armstrong, guys like Dante Fowler, Billy D. Sam Williams is a rookie still, so I'm not really putting this this responsibility on him. He's supposed to be a complimentary uh extra pass rusher at this point. I wasn't really banking on him to be like a lead guy. But Dorrance Armstrong, guys like Dante Fowler, those dudes definitely can get you sacks in the regular season. But I think the closer you get to the playoffs, like you're going to need better dudes. And I think that's the problem that we ran into with those guys. We got all the sacks in the world early on in the season when teams were still experimenting and they didn't really know who we were. And they was trying to figure out how to deal with Dallas. And they was actually holding the ball still. Yeah, we were getting all kind of sacks on teams. But something just happened. In the in the in the in the middle of the season, just down the stretch, something just happened, and our pass rush wasn't so pass rushy anymore. It's interesting. It's interesting, right? So if we get to twenty six overall, Dallas Cowboys, do you think that edge is going to be on their list? Let me also offer you another situation. I know it feels like we got a bunch of edge dudes because um, we just keep saying the names of edge dudes, but in real life, Michael Parsons. He's a he's more of a defensive weapon. He's not a dude that plays edge every single every single play. I don't really want him playing edge every single play. D Law is an older gentleman. Got about two more years on his contract. Dorrance got one. Dante may not even come back for you. Sam Williams is a rookie, right? So the only two players that have long term investment at the edge position in in the Dallas Cowboys room right now in the edge room is Michael Parsons, in which he's up for money soon because of the player that he is michael parsons and sam williams those two dudes are the only two long-term options that you have in your pass rush room and we know that brother dan quinn loves 
to rotate guys, which goes back to my Drew Sanders conversation because now with a guy like Drew Sanders, you can have help at linebacker and at and at at um at uh, pass rush. We'll cross that road whenever we get there. That's another draft conversation. We'll 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 definitely get that. But I'm just interested in what do you guys think is the biggest emergency, right? The fact that once the offensive lines get better, right? Oh, we we we're running into the Eagles offensive line and the 49ers offensive line, and you know we may run into all these top tier offensive lines in the playoffs. Well, what happens with Dorrance and Dante um, Fowler when we run into those guys? Like we need better dudes to try to get, you know, pass rush. And notice I said pass rush down the stretch. So that can also be all right. So also Diggy Zuwa, is he good enough at three tech for you uh, to be getting adequate pass rush? I do think he is right, but do we need another dude in, in like some of those pass rush packages to where all right, we know it's not a run. Hank is coming off the field, but let's give us another defensive tackle that could be a pass rusher to go along with Osa to help those guys out. I know there's in game formation that you know that I always I always call when we have five or so you know ends on the field and they rush with one down guy that could be Osa, but maybe maybe we can live in this world where. We have another pass rusher at D tackle that can help us in, in some of those situations where it's not a clear pass rush situation and end games down the field. We thought Neville Gallimore was going to be that guy, but crickets. You see how that worked? Um, but this is the last one. The, the the last position that really, really makes me, you know, ponder about uh what the Cowboys are gonna do in this offseason and the draft in particular, right? So we talked about Noah Brown being the the second best wide receiver, Connor McGovern being a guard. Um, that bothers the bothers the, the 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 dog shit out of me. Um, of course, the linebacker position can get better. Of course, uh, and then there's pass rush down the stretch. But cornerback two was such an issue. It was such a problem, right? It was it. I was saying this every single week. I was like, there are two things that are keeping this defense from being elite. The impediment for this defense being elite is run game and cornerback two. At some point, run game got fixed. Cowboys put resources in the run game. That's Jonathan Hankins. Uh, you know, dudes just got better coaching. Bo Hanna ended up being a solid run player for you. He came off the field at some point. Uh, Carlos Watkins became one of your best run game players. He never went back to practice squad. Van Der Esch became a great run game guy for you. It was like, man, man, man. End of the season coming. Run game is sold up. But there was one thing that we just could not do once run game got figured out. They, the you know the teams that we went up against, they decide okay, cool, we got to get rid of the ball quick. All right, so if they're going to be getting rid of the ball quickly, then pass rush is not going to be as pass rushy. But they kept attacking cornerback two. They kept putting hands on cornerback two, and I'm just like, bro, if this cornerback two issue was not a problem. This defense will be elite. It'll be the best defense in the league right now because teams are having time. Teams are having hard times running on us. Teams are really just dumping the ball down and just trying to get some easy little yards, trying to get some easy little slant yards or whatever. And and anytime they try to get a chunk play or they run into an issue with their dink and dunk um, offense, they just throw the ball deep on cornerback to get a chunk play, get in the red zone, and then they turn their short red zone defense into touchdowns. Right in my mind. I'm just thinking about 2022 Cowboys, right? Could I live with this Noah Brown offense? I don't know why my voice is cracking. Could I live in this Noah Brown in this offense where Noah Brown is the second best receiver, but I had an elite cornerback too? That's when I started thinking. That's when the wheels really started turning. I say, man, I can get a if I can get a real problem, and and then I really got mad because I'm like, man, if Kelvin Joseph was just good, we wouldn't have no problems here. If Kelvin Joseph was just the guy that that, that, that we all or that Vash, I'll, I'll, I'll take accountability for that. If Kelvin Joseph was just the guy that Vash thought he was going to be, boy, we wouldn't have no issues here. Deron Bland is killing stuff from the nickel spot, killing it from the nickel spot, killing it so good that we go, hey man, can you play outside? And he's one of your better outside guys. And we just kept throwing bodies at cornerback too. We threw bodies at cornerback too. We threw Mullen at cornerback too. We threw Rhodes at cornerback too. We threw Joseph at cornerback too. We threw Nation at cornerback too. And they just kept damn throwing it back at us, boy. They just the, 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 the more we threw, the more they threw. The more we threw, the more bodies we threw at damn cornerback too. The more they kept throwing passes on, and and and, and it kept working. In my mind, if you neutralize cornerback two, you neutralize big plays. They ain't throwing on digs. 
ain't really, they ain't really throwing on him. You know what I mean? J. Ron Curtis is a is a tight end eraser. You know what I mean? I can actually make this argument that if cornerback two is a little more sold up because you know corner, you know uh, nine routes is really a, a catch and throw route. You ain't got to hold that ball too long, right? Man, if you sh- if you if you have you know a solid cornerback two situation, then your pass rush may start to get in sacks again, right? So if you the Cowboys, man, and you looking at this list, you go, man, look. Noah Brown is your second best wide receiver, but at least we moving the football. At least we can score points. We're going to have a problem when we run into the, the the number one defense in the league, the 49ers, but at least we can score points on a regular day. And another point to the wide receiver situation, we have a wide receiver one already. We have CeeDee Lamb. The problem is, you know, your wide receiver two can't be your wide receiver four. That's the problem. So in my mind, the Cowboys could be thinking, okay, yo, look, we got wide receiver one, CeeDee Lamb. Let's just get some complimentary dudes to make him better. Gallup didn't give you nothing. Hilton didn't give you much. Noah Brown was your second guy. Be better than Noah Brown. You should be good to go. Um, This offensive line was good in the run game with Connor McGovern. Pass rush win rate wasn't the best, but, you know, Dak Prescott can help mitigate some of that, right? But you can live in this world with Connor McGovern. Um, Pass rush down the stretch, I think pass rush can be fixed via cornerback too. It's just my opinion. Y'all ain't ain't, got to rock with this. But it really came down, for me, it really comes down to linebacker and cornerback too because the biggest impediment to this defense last year was run game which was highly affected by van der Esch being in and out was run game and cornerback too i feel like it's easy to fix run game now because the d line is just going to be better at run game plus you get another year of osa another year of you know neville galmore another year of chauncey another year of bohan and then we go get to draft some more run game players that'll be fine i think run game will be cool Linebacker versus cornerback two, though. Just pure linebacker versus pure cornerback two. Cornerback two was such a problem. We threw so many bodies at that position. So we have to think for ourselves. This is sober vice right now, right? I can be offensive because I'm offensive guy all day, every day. I'm O-line guy all day, every day. When I played, when I coached, it was all offense, right? I can love wide receiver two. I can love offensive guard, you know, left tackle, left side player. I can love that to pieces, man. But the biggest emergency on this list, in my personal opinion, is cornerback two. Because no matter what we did, we couldn't fix it. There was actually a time to where linebacker like was was okay. We 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 threw stuff at linebacker just that Van der Esch got hurt, but 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 linebacker actually was fine after a while. No matter what we did at cornerback too, it was a sore thumb on this damn defense. So if you ask me now, once because you know last week I was like, hey man, we got to draft the left side player, we got to draft wide receiver. Now I do think cornerback is a situation that I'm actually taking really, really seriously because if you can get a really, really good um, cornerback out of this draft and they can really man up and they can really play zone smartly and they can really not get beat on deep ball, right, with or without a free safety's help, then that takes away more options from people putting points up on your defense. That's all I got to say about that, man. Love y'all to pieces, bro. I just uh, wanted to get some extra content out. We're not going to be streaming this week. Uh, so I just wanted to make this soliloquy and put it out just so we can, you know, have some uh, things to add to the conversation. You know what I mean? Uh, be sure to hit all the buttons and uh, follow me on Twitter and the Patreon.com and the Twitch.tv. Y'all hold down for those. Keep up some peace. Keep man. Till next time. Draft Corner. 